Now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. It's Puckle! Puckle! It's Puckle! Puckle! Pokemon Underground Champions League, oh yeah! Puckle! Puckle! And welcome to the 502nd episode of the Puckle Podcast. I'm your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with whoever I have. I've got the wonderful, as always, Sublime. Hey, hey, hey. And we've also got the the knowledgeable, as always, Linian. I am not wonderful. That is uh, wise of you not to describe me that way. I'm not knowledgeable. You're not wonderful. (laughs) Yeah, they're always mutually exclusive. That's Mm -hmm. how how it works. But welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007. We talk Pokemon here from the video game to the trading card game. We haven't done the trading card game on the main show in a while. Maybe we should someday. Well, we have a whole sub, a whole podcast dedicated to it. We do at um, Puckle Plus. That's true. I know. But Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like we do like a little bit of love, like something a little bit more casual on the main show one day. We give the people what they want. And it it could be a lot of fun. There's also uh, what I really want to do is I would love to do a really weird episode where we, like, play a Pokemon board game, and, like, we have the Oh episode. my gosh. Oh my gosh. Do you remember as a kid, I don't know if you knew if this came out, because we're, like, almost the same age, and we were obviously yes. around when based, like, when Pokemon started, right? Yeah. Uh, there was this board game. Are you talking about Pokemon Master Quest? Because, yes, I'm very aware. I played game. Master is that Quest. The one? Yeah, Such a terrible okay. game. <laughs> yeah, the OG Master Quest is garbage. It's it's designed so badly. Yeah, but it's kind of iconic. Oh yeah, no. I so Jay Witch did a thing on it a few years ago where he tried to play like a whole round of it, like by the rules, right? And he played by the rules and it took them like eight hours to complete. That tracks to how I played it when I was like six and my cousins had it. It would yeah. take us a whole day and I don't know why I liked it in in. Uh, it is yeah. not Master Quest that I'm talking about. Is oh, the, I just realized. Which yeah, one are you talking it about? It is Master Trainer 1999. Oh, there are two of them. So there's there's a Gen One and a Gen Two, and I think there's also technically yeah. a Gen Three. There is a Gen Three one. I played the Gen One. Yeah, I the Gen like One is the worst. Bought Gen One. It's iconic though to me. Like it's I loved the, figuring it's the worst. it out as a kid. I sure I did it all entirely incorrectly. Gen Gen twos I heard streamlines it a little bit better, but I don't think it's much better. I but I really want to do either like a stream or a uh, a stream or a podcast where we just play that. Like we get a group of us together and we dedicate everything. the time to that finish. That would be an exercise in frustration. Yeah, well, if we can get like tabletop sim though, and they 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 mm-hmm. definitely have that. It definitely exists. Okay, for so tabletop sim. But are we going to play the good one or the bad one? <laughs> I want to yes. play the bad one. <laughs> I feel Okay, so like I feel like we have to play the bad one just for completionist <laughs> sake. Um because yes. you know you know after we do it once people are going to be like, "Are oh, you going to do the next one?" And uh I'm all for that because one, I'm a big board game person. I love board games. And I I think it would be just like a blast and it would be something the community would really like or even just like the listener base would really like. <laughs> Also, Monopoly. We'll My Monopoly game is Pokemon themed. They, I, there, I there have a Pokemon that. Monopoly. Actually, a Puckalonian gave it to me at like uh, when we had PuckleCon in Dayton. Like he came over no. to the convention center and like gave it to me. It was very nice. So I forget nice. his name. I forget his name, but he was a super nice guy. I, I really appreciated it. So I do remember you if you're still listening. By the way, uh, <laughs> reach out PucklePodcast at gmail dot com. I really appreciated that. No, it was a, it was a good time. I mean, I I do think we should play Master Quest like on tabletop sim or something. I think that would be a really good time. That theme song is now just stuck in my head, and we only just said the words Master Quest, and it's just yeah. blue. Oh, okay, I wasn't thinking Trainer. about it until you said theme song. First of all, so thank you for that. <laughs> now I have it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, the Master it's Trainer right. uh, from the nineties. Love that. Yeah, we should we should definitely look into tabletop sim for that. I'm super that into that be, idea. I, I would be so here. For I that. might already have it installed on my computer. <laughs> I am super into this idea. We'll have to get like three or four of us together and just do it. I want to I want to go through the rules to see if there's like a way to like pretty up the overlay or anything, though. 
The overlay seemed actually like, at least in tabletops, and relatively clean. I was surprised. Yeah, I just don't know if there's like a good way to like keep score for people watching along. You know what I mean? Hmm. That's all. That's all I was thinking. I don't know if there's a score to keep other than I hope they're close. <laughs> <laughs> Pray to God. Uh, all right, but that is uh, that. That's fun. Uh, I've been playing OU this week, so that's been okay. I've been getting into it again. Gen eight OU is awful. I thought Gen seven OU was awful. <laughs> But it's just like, I don't know, every every gen now I just feel like is getting away from perfection. And then everyone thought Gen 5 was awful. Gen 5 was awful. Gen 5 was Weather Wars. It was bad. It was Dragon Wars. We loved the Dragon Wars. It was 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 Dragon Dragon Weather Wars. It was Dragon Weather Wars because the the dragons were unchecked. Fighting type Pokemon, surprisingly unchecked as well uh, because of the dragons. Yeah. And well, you had to do it too because Hydreigon existed and... Uh, because Hydreigon was there, you needed a fighting type to be able to take it out because you weren't taking it out with another dragon. So it was, mm-hmm. uh, it was a bad time. Like it was, uh, that was a fairly unbalanced forget meta. The, um, yeah, the acrobatics flying jump shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Oh, Gen 5 had some Jake stuff. I love it. <laughs> Gen 5 was, was very unbalanced. <laughs> very, yeah, Gen, it was. Gen, Gen 6, 6 was, was very such good. a palate cleanser. I think Gen 6 is my favorite Gen. Gen um, 6 is probably my favorite meta of all time. My favorite yeah, meta same. of all time is probably Gen 6. Uh, Gen 7 was all right, but like Gen 8 feels weird now. I don't know. It, like I've been playing it and the things that are, it, it, it's one of those things that kind of feels like it's going back to, it's kind of like Gen 7 in which there's like a few very good things that are running around. Mm-hmm. And then you also have, uh, it's also weird playing without gimmicks again, uh, <laughs> since Dynamax is banned in OU. And it, I don't know, it's just, it's very weird. It just feels very weird because you have very few centralizing Pokemon again that you always have to worry about. Lots of priority, priority everywhere. And so it's, it's just very frustrating in that sense. But maybe it's just because I haven't played it enough to be able to like get it to really click what's mm-hmm. good and what's not. I would say like team building is really hard now, not because not because like the meta is hard or anything. It's just because there has definitely been a drop off in who's how many people are playing OU. Yeah. And beca- one, because of the timer. I think the timer is the biggest issue out of that uh, on the cart. So like yeah. fewer people are playing OU and yeah. it shows because most of the articles on Smogon are just incomplete for all of the Pokemon. It's very disheartening because like you'll go and because like mm. the way I used to do it is you can go on Smogon and you can be like, oh, this Pokemon was good. And you're just like, OK, I want to use this Pokemon. And it's just like, here's like three different Pokemon that would match up well with it. Mm. Team up well with it. And then you go and you, you build that and you can just go down the line. You can get like a halfway decent team that you can tune. But like with, when it's just like spreads and that's all you get. <laughs> it's not as fun, though. Picoletics is kind of carrying that crutch, I would say. You always go to Picoletics and see how many people are playing with like what are the most common teammates and stuff yep it's very frustrating though otherwise i, I the old school way is gone maybe it's just because i can't adapt i'm too old now <laughs> i i'm not I, I can't adapt to the times get with it or get out old man that's exactly <laughs> how i feel <laughs> that's exactly how i feel is that so is that it's just like yeah you got to get out of here Thatch. you're too old you can't you can't <laughs> get with the times but anything new with you guys Anything new? Anything interesting? I should have been prepping for the speed draft, which starts in like two hours. Yeah, by the time the show comes out, it's over. So <laughs> Yeah, you should go watch the VOD because Sharks put an obscene amount of work into it. He and has. It looks like it's going to be fun. He has. I should have been, you know, prepping or reading up. What I did was put, there were eight of us in the, the thing. So I picked my eight first picks and that's it. <laughs> I'm only 40% sure how the draft actually functions. Well, you know, it's not your first time at the rodeo. <laughs> yeah, no, but this is an entirely yeah. different system. Like, there's there's no tiering. It's all points. So you have, like, X number of points to buy all of your stuff. So I'm like, I'm sure I'll figure it out, right? Like, how bad can I do? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be okay. Uh, it'll be it, fine. Like, the, the whole point of it is for it to kind of be hectic anyway. Yeah. That's kind of the whole point, just to be hectic and mess around. I, I figure I have an advantage over everyone else, which is that I never spent more than 10 minutes on prep in any given week anyway. So <laughs> I I don't lose anything, but I know that, like, P. McGee would take six hours a draft match, and he's just got 25 minutes. So I think the, the playing field's kind of level. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm very excited to see what happens with that. I'm I'm disappointed I can't play, mostly because I didn't realize it was the same day of GoFest. Mm. And mm. not GoFest. Well, my wife likes to play, and it's more like it's more like it's a good time to spend with my wife. And she doesn't get a lot of that, Saturdays yeah, off. That's what we used to do so, it as. But I feel like I've just been inundated with the GoFest commercials and ads. Oh my gosh, Have it's been really Go bad. GoFest ads? It's like, okay, none. I get it. Like, I, none. <laughs> There's Go I've Fest. gotten a lot, actually. What? Yeah, there's like a ton. Oh my god. Yeah, it's very frustrating. With all these celebrity tie-ins, and I'm like, really? You think that's what's gonna be? Oh, okay. I'm not gonna play GoFest because, like, so my my number one fear is that next year they like revert to like pre-pandemic times, and they're just like, we all have to go to Chicago for GoFest, and I'm gonna be like, okay, but do you realize how much more accessible it was to not? <laughs> <laughs> Like, also, I will pay you more money if you let me do it from my house. <laughs> Fun fact, there are more people not in Chicago than in Chicago. I know this is surprising. <laughs> yeah, I just always thought that was so weird. Although maybe not in the Midwest. There might be more people in Chicago than the rest of the Midwest. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Uh, Chicago's the third largest city in the U.S. So it is, sense. and Checks it's out. the only place worth being in that area, in my mind. Uh, <laughs> I somewhat agree. Uh, I somewhat agree. I think Sorry, there's... I'm a city person. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree. I think there's some other good cities. Like, I thought. I think Columbus, Ohio is very nice. Columbus is nice. I concur. I think Columbus, Ohio is very nice. I miss living in Columbus almost daily. What's the city? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the city, yeah. Yeah, you don't know. I, what I've, those are. I've seen those distant mythical places maybe <laughs> twice in my life. Well, Chicago's if you move cool. over here, I'll show you what a city is. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid of you showing me what a city is. <laughs> All right. That's fair. On that. On that note, <laughs> there is some news to talk about in the Pokemon universe, so let's kick it on over to the news. Let's cue that epic music. Coming to you live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower, this just in... And welcome to the news. In the news, we've got a few... I think this has been, like, one of the more exciting weeks in a while. <laughs> Given that we have zero BDSP news <laughs> since February, which still blows my mind, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a remake, you know? You know what's gonna be in it. I don't know. They to did a certain like, extent. With, like, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they did, like, a lot. I, I don't know. Like, it'd be cool uh, to just get a trailer you're and, like... right, they did. You see something. <laughs> Yeah, okay, moving on. Uh, Pokemon Unite is going to be released on Wednesday, July 21st, and if you download it on Switch, you will be able to get Zero Aura as long as you log in before Aug August 31st. Um, that's cool, I guess. I don't know if how that yeah. works. I'm not a MOBA guy yet. We're going to put the yet asterisk. Oh my um, gosh, we're going to have to make a Puckle team. I No, I, I already suggested we do it, and then next time there's Nationals, we like have the Puckle-sponsored team with jerseys and everything. Yeah, we've got Seth and Claude who are already, they're already big into that. So they're like, you know what? We're going in. <laughs> I'm already for it. I'm all for it. I just want to be there. I'll train for it. I I just want to do it. I mean, I'm such a baby, but like, I'm excited to like, try it out. You know? I want the jersey. That's what I want. I want the jersey. Yeah, like, I'm, <laughs> I've never played a game like this, but I'm like... Well, let's see what it's about, you know? I'm I think that's the it. whole point of this game, too. Isn't it, isn't it so much yeah. like, oh, ooh, Pokemon MOBA. It's more like, ooh, hey, more people playing MOBAs because there's an IP connected to it that more people know about. I mean, and Pokemon is a great, like, Pokemon is a great, like, wallpaper to put on something, you know? They've done it since 1998, so yes. <laughs> Pokemon Pinball, Pokemon Puzzle League. P Puzzle League? Oh, I loved Puzzle League and Pinball. Puzzle League legitimately wasn't, and Snap, they all, all three of them weren't supposed to be uh, Pokemon games. Mm -hmm. they, then they just were just like, oh, let's throw the Pokemon uh, coat of paint on it and see how it goes. It works. It's a great coat of paint. It's got a lot of, la yeah, high quality paint, you know? No, Pokemon coat of paints are just what happened all the time. They did three of those puzzle games. Three of them. Three? Uh, no, no, two. They did two. I Only thought there two. were two. There yeah, was the, the Nintendo 64 and, and the, the, Game, the Boy Game Boy Color. Yep, you're right. Yeah, I thought it was three. I, I thought there was a third one for some reason. I don't know why. Wait, three? Pokemon what? Uh, so there's Pokemon Puzzle Puzzle League. 
on the N64, and then there's the Pokemon Puzzle Challenge League on the Game Boy Color. Okay, but here's what I discovered. Uh, if you have that thing on the Switch where you're a member for the uh, internet, yeah. you know? I forget what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the original, in one of the, like, original Nintendo, you know how you have, like, a library of old games yeah, yeah. you can get for free? Mm-hmm. One of them is the original, is the game that Puzzle League was based on. Oh, that's crazy. <sighs> Yeah, it's this. It's in Japanese, uh, but you can play it. Oh, that's interesting. On that's your Switch. Cool. Fun fact. Like, dig around. You'll find it. That's super it's cool. It's with these fairies. It's like these little girl fairies instead of Pokemon, but it's the exact game. Exact yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worth it. Without the Pokemon Code of Paint, which is, sur- like, it's a little surreal. It's interesting. Get into it. And those are our feelings yeah. on Unite. Uh, <laughs> Who's the <Yeah>. next one? <laughs> Who's the next one? That's Ooh. me. Uh, we've got 12 episodes of Pokemon Master Journeys coming out on Netflix in the U.S. in September, specifically the 12th. Why is it so long? (laughs) They, like, skipped, like, a session, which is really weird, if you think about it. Because, like, they were doing 12 episodes every Every four months. Every every 12 weeks, essentially. And then, like, so the next batch should have come out in June, and we just didn't hear anything until now. So they just, like, skipped 12 weeks. Man, it must have been really hard to find someone to do a theme song. Yeah. That, that, that's the only thing I can think of, which is sad, because they got rid of the best Pokemon theme. They've had the logo for the wa- for a while, which is really even more surprising to me. I'm just sad, because the journey no longer starts today. I don't know. That, we'll find that out. That was the best part. Speaking of which, there's going to be new... Uh, there's gonna. I forgot to dump the June episodes on Patreon for uh, Packle. Those will be up there This probably as of today. Uh, as of recording but then next week we'll do another one as well um and you guys can all listen and have fun with packle all right on that note though uh moving on sublime you've got this next one yeah i got this next one because i am a lover of pop music okay anyone knows that's me true. knows that i love actually that's true pop that, that's music. very true <laughs> i do okay <laughs> Yeah, the only this is reason great. I know anything about pop music is because of Sublime. Yes. Yeah, that and disco. Those are my first choices. Okay, so there's a new Pokemon song that's part of the P25 music collaboration called Take It Home. I guess this, this is the third one because we had the Post Malone and then we had the Katy Perry. Yeah. And this is by someone called Mabel. I have no idea who this is. I knew Katy Perry. That's uh, that's about it. Honestly, this is the best one yet, in my opinion, is as it? a song. I, well, I thought Electric mm, yes. was very much just like a Katy Perry Electric song. Electric was a good song. Yeah, it was like a Katy Perry song. It was, it was like that's the way I would describe it. Acceptable Katy yeah. Perry song. Yeah. yeah, if somebody was just like somebody was like describe Electric, I'd be like, it's a Katy Perry song, and I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. It, it sounds like it sounds like all of the parts of like Roar and stuff, but without like the really big like yeah, chorus she knows where it's what she's like doing. Roar. Yeah, she's she she knows her style. She knows who she is. She's really good at n- n- producing the sound that she wants to create. Yes. Even though she's not like the greatest singer. And honestly, that's more important to me. <laughs> I don't disagree yep. with you whatsoever. Uh so in even bigger news, uh <laughs> for some reason they announced the new Switch OLED, uh which was the new <laughs> Switch Pro that everybody that's was a good really way hyped to about. It, for some reason. Uh okay, I'm I'm going to tell you like a really unfun fact about this. So Thatch already pre-ordered one. Why? I don't know. Because, like, my wife was, like, really excited about it and, like, wanted to pre-order it. So I'm like, oh, well, pre-order me one, too. And okay. then, like, we pre-ordered it. And, like, we went to dinner the other day after we pre-ordered it because they opened on Thursday. And I was just like, why did we do that? <laughs> like, I just asked her. I'm like, why did we do that? And she's just like, what do you mean? I'm like, like, why did we buy those? And she's just like, well, because they're the new Switch. They're going to be better. I'm like, but how are they better are other they? than, like, the screen? Hmm. And she's just yeah, like... Yeah, it's like, the one way it's better is irrelevant to me. <laughs> I'm just like, the screen... It's just like, well, to be fair, so, like, because there's two of us, what we do is, like, one person will get the TV and the other person, Definitely. like, will go play on the couch at the same time, you know? So, like, that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, I'm like, yeah, it's just, like, the bigger screen. And maybe the screen's brighter and, like, a little bit better, you know, in general. But I'm just like, she's like, well, yeah, maybe the battery life's better. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> she's just like, huh. I, I'm just like, the only no, The battery really... is a little, a little better, I thought. If you look at their official specs, it's not different whatsoever from the Switch revision from a couple years ago. Hmm. It, yeah, it's really bad. And so, and I'm just like, the only pros I can think of is like slightly larger screen and cool white Joy-Con. And that's about it. To be fair, the other thing that I think is an unsung cool thing that nintendo should be praising more about it is that the dock actually has a vent built into it 
which sounds like nothing, but they haven't done that <laughs> in the old docks, which is uh, very frustrating. So, like, you can at least get a little bit of better airflow through your Switch that way. So, I, I don't know why they didn't. I also don't know why they just didn't put, like, a cheap, like, fan in the dock to begin with. But that's just, just that, sh what, an, I guess, unreasonable things. Is that too much to ask for? Apparently so. Yeah, apparently, yeah. I just want, like, maybe help <laughs> the cooling on the Switch. Just, like, a little bit. Uh, the OLED should help with that, because OLED's usually a little bit colder than, uh, than LCD. So we have that going for us. But... Uh, the thing that matters about this with Pokemon is that during the announcement trailer, they actually showed BDSP footage on this new, uh, OLED Switch, which showcased some, uh, minor graphical improvements. Uh, it actually looks kind of nice comparatively, like, it actually looks better. They, I, I don't want to say washed out, but it's definitely not as vibrant as it used to be, and that vibrancy was bad. But, yeah, this is, it's not usually noteworthy, uh... <laughs> McGee, who writes the news document notes, uh, except this is literally the only footage we've gotten since the game was announced, <laughs> which is absolutely true. Uh, we have not gotten. I any just hope news. there's a special Tina post-game episode. Tina, what do you mean? Tina? Giratina. Oh, Giratina. That's my name for oh. Giratina. I call I her Tina. She's my good friend from another hat. You know, you know, love. Yeah. Uh, my ghost friend. So I would love to see like. Any kind of post game, like what I would really like to see is demythicalize a Pokemon, like they did, like they have been doing, which has been really cool. With RC, uh, yeah, I agree. agree. Like they they demythicalize, yeah, do shame Keldeo. They did Keldeo. They've done uh, Deoxys now, and I would really like to see them demythicalize another Pokemon, like, I mean, like Shaman Dark is the Rai obvious or Shaman, answer. Or Shaman. Dark Rai or Shaman are the obvious answer. I can't wait until like you're just going around and then you just like turn the corner, and there's just Meloetta just chilling there like, hey, what's up? <laughs> and then people will say Gen 5 remakes confirmed. I'll just, like, I'll shrug and just go, why not both? Uh, like, they should do Darkrai and Shaman. In my opinion, Darkrai and Shaman should both do it. You know what? Demythicalize all mythicals, but yeah, I was just thinking, well, if they're doing one, I assume it would be Shaman. Shaman or Darkrai. Yeah, I can see all. them very easily yeah. doing, like, a post-game episode with Darkrai, because you could tie Cresselia into it, too, and get mm -hmm, rid of the roaming nonsense. True. So I, I that's kind of what I'm hoping. We'll see, though. We'll see. But yeah, uh, I guess video game battling news. Uh, that's you, Linian. I just Pokemon Players Cup 25th Anniversary Invitational has been announced and will bring together some of the best players throughout Pokemon's history, including some TCG stuff. And they'll stream it from the 13th through the 15th. I really don't like when they just invite. I don't like their invitationals. So, uh, we get to watch other people battle. Okay, to be fair, there's a lot of people that like to do that, though. Y yeah, but when there's not even any potential for for you to compete, it's just like, I know. cool. Are you into esports? I guess that's your jam, you know? Well, the difference is with esports, it it's not, hey, this guy was relevant 15 years ago, come watch him fight the other guy who's relevant 10. It's like... I don't know. For people into that, I feel like it could be a big thing. The, the only thing I don't like about it is I feel like VGC is already like a clicky enough community, like in terms of the people that go oh, to yeah. tournaments and everything. Mm. And so like this just kind of reinforces that. You know what I mean? Uh, that, that's my that's my only issue with it. And uh, and that, that's just because I, I have experienced it myself where they're just like very clicky. They don't they're not like I wouldn't say everybody is unaccepting of new people coming into the community. And it's somewhat regional, too. Like, some places are better than others. Yeah, there's, like, a large enough group of people that just doesn't... That isn't very, very friendly to that. And that's the thing that bothers me the most. Um, mm -hmm. It's a large enough group that makes it feel like a turnoff for that kind of thing. But And, and like I said, like, invitationals like this just kind of, like, propagate that a little bit further. I, I think VGC is a really cool format, and I think playing it, and with a lot... I do know a lot of people who are really great about it, and are just like, yeah, you should come and play. Yeah, I mean, th it is clicky, but let's. there are definitely people that are very inviting as well. Yes. Yeah, I want to make that clear. There are plenty For of sure. inviting yeah. people. I, I don't think we want to come off as suggesting that the VGC community is toxic, because that's definitely yeah. not what we're saying. No, 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 no. I, I would say that it's definitely, like, there's definitely toxic people in the VGC community. Mm -hmm. It's enough, it, there's enough of them that make me steer away. Um, and it's nothing, there's nothing against, like, people, like, there's some really good people, like Leonard Craft and stuff like that, who are just very, very welcoming. And Dave, you know who you are, Dave. Good work, Dave. Y'all know. We're proud of you, know, Dave. Y'all, y'all can, you know. But yeah, on that, on that note, uh, I guess go to the Pokemon Go news. news. Isn't that great? I have great news, you guys. I have great news. 
There's no news. There's no There's Pokemon no Go news this no week because it's GoFest right now. I mean, yeah, it's GoFest, and I'm sure if you're like me and Thatch, you've been in and you already know. Let yep. me put it that way. <laughs> Toby is free. Toby is free. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and the yeah. only Puckle news we have right now is that Summer League is still happening. Make sure you come by. I think there's only like two weeks left of badge collection. Yeah, fight me. It's Monday. Do it. Yeah, I'll be on. Now. Fight me, coward. Do it now. All right. On that note, that is going to be it. We're going to kick it on over to Puckle's Poke Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Oh, hi, and welcome to the Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz our co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Mark, here to explain the rules. Our fabulous co-hosts will work as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that fans have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The host can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct and do not use the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. And welcome to Puckle's Pokey Quiz. Thank you to Mark from the Dunsparce gang for giving us that nice introduction. You all know the rules. We're going to go ahead and get Linian and Sublime ready for these questions. And we're going to go ahead and get this first question from Professor Snag. What generation has the least fairy types? Current by current typing assignments, generation is done by national dex number, and this also includes megas and regional forms. So five, right? Is there any that have less than two? Are there any in five? Whimsicott and Cottony. Okay. Well, I can only think of two for Gen two. No, three from Gen two. Never mind. Um, I can think of more than three for Gen two. Really? I I can just think of Cleffa, Granbull, and Snubble. Igglybuff, Togepi, oh, yeah, Togetic, yeah, 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 yeah. Meryl, okay, Azumarill. Right. Okay, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I think there might even be more. Uh, I, I can't think of any generation that has fewer than what's, two. What's in three? What's in three? Uh, Azuril, Mawil, Mawile. We're counting Mawile, Megas. Right, right. I don't think so. We are including Megas. We are including Megas. Okay. Oh, okay. Because then well, they also have things. Mega Altaria, but Gen 5 also has Mega Odno. So that those might be both... the only one, though. Wait, no, it's I'm dumb. It's definitely not six, I'm seven, dumb, or eight. I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm dumb. No, I'm dumb. It's four. If What's we're counting four? Megas, hmm. it's four. Because they only got Mine Jr. and Togekiss. That's it. Togekiss. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, that must be it, then. Yeah, because otherwise we're in a, a three-way tie. So counting Megas, there's only one, and that would be Gen 4. Final yeah, answer. Is that final your final answer. answer? Generation 4 is correct. It only has two, Mime Jr. and Togekiss. The second place answer is Generation 5. Which only has Mega Odd, no Cottony, and Whimsicott. So good for you Ooh. guys. Wait, Yay. was I missing one in Gen 3? You missed the Gardevoir oh, line. Co- yeah, the Ralts line. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Moving on. So you guys are one for one. This next one is going to come to us from none other than a b b b I know. We love him. What is love the only Bo. move that lowers the user's attack? Uh, as in... So you use the move, your attack gets lowered. Okay. There's only one move that does this. Because there's superpower. It's superpower. It lowers attack and defense. Yeah. But is there an, there's is there another attack that only like would that be valid or are we looking for one that only drops attack? That would be valid. Yes. Okay, then superpower. <laughs> well, then it's it, that's what it is. Yeah. Superpower is correct. Yes. <laughs> you can cl- you can close combat and drop both your defenses, or you can superpower and drop and make your, your attack. attack worse. Superpower is correct. Yes. Uh, so you are two for two. Uh, Liger's comment was, I did some fact-checking on this one, and I couldn't find something else. <laughs> he, he's just like, yeah, so I guess it is, he's just like, I guess it's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so your next question is your Pokedex entry. Question is always, I'll read you a Pokedex entry. You get two chances, uh, you get an extra one after you fail on the first one. But you can get two points if you get it right the first time. So this question is gonna come to you from Liger. It's Pokemon Y entry states. It binds itself to trees and marshes. It attracts prey with its sweet smelling smelling drool and gulps them down. Who's that Pokemon? Sounds like Weepin' Bell. I was thinking oh Weepin' Bell's a good guess. I that's a really good guess. I was thinking Cacleon, but Weepin' Bell sounds much more correct. 
Uh, I'm just trying to think. Are there any like the other flycatcher would be Carnivine, but I. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that it's sweet smelling the way that I would associate like a Weeping Bell being sweet smelling. You know. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with Weeping Bell. I thought that was a really good guess. Yeah. Weeping Bell is incorrect. Um, this oh. next one is from Pokemon oh. Pearl, the next entry. Hanging from branches, it uses its tentacles. It looks like a plant. It awaits prey, mouth wide open. It's Carnivine. Well, I guess it was Carnivine. Darn. The answer is Carnivine. You are correct. You got one point there. Uh, <laughs> Why does Carnivine have sweet-smelling drool? I'm it's concerned. a flycatcher. It's a flycatcher. That's, that's, what, it, that's what they do. Yeah. But, like, we already had a sweet smelling fly catcher. Well, it's a Venus fly trapper versus a pitcher no, plant. Yeah. It's a pitcher I, yeah, plant. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want Carnivine to smell nice. I don't feel like it should. <laughs> Carnivine, take a shower. <laughs> you should not smell yeah. nice. Uh, You're dirty. Carnivine, I don't know. Dirty, dirty vine thing. So this next question is going to come to you from, man, there's a lot of new people in this, and I'm sorry if I don't get to your question today. I, I'm going to tell Liger to keep the ones that I didn't do so that he, we have them. But this one is from The Afterman in red, blue, green, and yellow, which five Pokemon make up Professor Oak's team. Uh, this was a the battle. The unused you can, battle? The unused battle, yes. <sighs> but it's um, unused. I will only like, need three of the five Pokemon. I will give you one point for each that you get correct. I assume the starters have to be in that, right? Like Blastoise, Venusaur, Charizard. I assume it's the third one, right? Like just the one you don't pick. But it sounded also, like it was. You also get two strikes. You'll get like two accidental answers. Okay. Um. Hmm. Want to just say Charizard? <laughs> what is this? Every Pokemon game ever. Um. <laughs> just kidding. Every Pokemon game made since Charizard was popular. Uh. I mean, I. Had, Hmm. I don't know. If it was from that back, way that back far, I don't think they would have a Charizard bias. Well, no, I'm just saying, I think they'd probably have the starters, because those are things you can Oh, catch, okay, yeah, let's so. do Charizard is a soft yeah. test. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll give you that one. It, the answer is whatever the third starter that wasn't chosen was by you. It was the third the starter. I, okay, cool. Okay. Well, then, if, they're, if we're talking about Gen 1 bias, Gyarados. <laughs> Gyarados is another answer. Yes, that is correct. That used to be, like, their go-to shorthand for the strongest Pokemon. I don't yep. know why. Well, it had a very high special attack at the time. Well. Uh, <laughs> the special stat was really good. Yeah, there are three more Pokemon on this team that you guys have not answered. Uh, I, I only need one more of them to get you guys full credit. Um, hmm, okay. So, if we you did still the, have the hint water well. type stand-in, if we did the water type stand-in, the fire type stand-in would be an Arcanine. Are you locking that in? I'm suggesting it. I uh, sure. I have no. I have no objection. Arcanine sure. is also correct. Um, that gives you guys three. I'll, I'll give you the rest. Okay. Last guess is the last executor for the grass stand. It is. It is. It is the executor. Okay, this yeah. is just Gary Oak's tea. <laughs> it's, it's all the Pokemon that Gary Oak would have used in place of the starter. Yes. Plus one more that you probably won't guess. It is uh, Chansey the, the, because it was so rare. No, the fifth one is close. That's close. That's a close answer. The The answer is uh, actually Tauros. Mm. He had a Tauros on top of all that. That makes sense, because Ash caught so many of them that one time, you know? I don't think that's why. I think I think they were just like, nobody else had a Tauros. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys got three points for that, though. You didn't even use the hint. So, yeah, you know, it's literally just like the Pokemon that would be the stand-in for the type on Gary Oak's team. And like, they swap one of them out for the starter. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. It's like, okay, it's Executor, Arcanine, Gyarados, drop one for your starter. I'm just so glad, because my next answer would probably have been, like, Kabu Tops. <laughs> so oh my gosh. I'm glad no. you stepped up. <laughs> so you guys got three for three there, so you guys are you guys are cruising. You got uh, three, four, five, six points. You still haven't used the Dang. hint. And your next qu- know, question right. is your base stat question, as always. And we're going to grab it today from G. McGee. Not P. McGee. G. McGee. Not to be confused. Ex- exactly. It's very confusing, but it's fine. When you knock this one out, you get two prize cards. <laughs> what steel type has the highest special attack of all steel type Pokemon? So Dialga's got 150. Yeah, Dialga is 150. <laughs> That's hard to beat. A cover box legendary is often hard to beat. Um... Is there any, like, legendary that ha- 
not legendary, legendary or megas. Like, that's the question. Because sometimes yes. the megas can get really high there. And all the steel megas I can think of are physical. Yeah. Lucario has... It's not 150. It's high. It's, it's not, not 150. 150. Yeah, it's like 140 maybe, but it's not 150. Uh, it might even be 145, but it's not 150. In fact, I don't think it's 145 because the... What I love about Mega Lucario is it goes from having a higher special attack to a higher attack. Physical attack? Hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely not Mega Lucario. I can't um, think of anything because it used... To- it's probably Dialga. What has more than 150? Well, the only thing that used to have 150 was... Ultra Beast? No. There's not a Steel Ultra Beast has, that's like... Well, no, because like, Celestia is a giant pain, but it is not over, like, a special attacking monster, you know? So Yeah. I mean, Aegislash used to be 150 as well, but that's but been But it is now cut. 140. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna need an answer. Uh, I'm, I'm down I, to say I mean, Dialga's Dialga. a pretty safe guess, I feel like, yeah. Yeah. Dialga is correct with 150... Uh, as it's based at total, Dialga is the number one answer. The uh, follow-ups to that are Mega Lucario and Aegislash at 140. Oh, uh, and then also and then also Magnazone, Heatran, and Magirna. 130. <clears throat> I know Heatran's 130. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's uh, Those are your Steel-type base stats for all of you when you go to play Fuchsia City Feud. And uh, that that's the game. There you go. You guys got eight points today. So that is a perfect run. I think that's the first perfect run in this series. That's true. Because we we guessed the correct Oak team despite not remembering Carnivine. Well, what it's so good that you guessed Gyarados. Because once you guessed Gyarados, I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's the standards. <laughs> All right. So that currently, was teamwork making the dream work. Mm-hmm. Currently in first place. We have a two-way tie between Seth Vilo and Linian, very fitting, with 15 Yay. points. In third place, we have Whimsicott with 14 points. In fourth place, we have Sublime with eight points. In a f- three-way tie for fifth place, we have P. Mickey, R. Sigma, and Jushiro with seven points. And in last place, we have Basket with six. Everybody else has yet to get on the board. So we'll see how that goes, see how that shakes out. If you want more Puckles Poke Quiz, tune in next week. Until then, we're going to kick it on over to the topic. Hey guys, if you haven't already, be sure to head over to Patreon and check out our Puckle Anime Club podcast where we go over Pokemon journeys, talk about the episodes, you can listen to the commentary real time as you watch the show, or you can just go ahead and listen to our review episode that we do at the end. You just have to go over to Patreon and be at the $5 tier to be able to access it. I think it's been a lot of fun making, and I hope if you decide to go and listen to it, you have a great time listening to it as well. But until then, keep on listening to the show and you've got a topic to get to. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is something a little bit more lighthearted than our typical stuff. We are going to talk about our favorite characters from the Pokemon universe of all time. And this started because uh, our good friend Morrow Life on the pod sent us like a list of topics. He he, like split up a bunch of different types of NPCs to have us talk about. But I think it's better just for us to talk about all of them at once. Because I think talking about Elite Four members, one, who remembers any Elite Four member that isn't like Berg or like the original four, right? Wait, who? Berg isn't an elite oh, wait, four no, member. Berg, He's a Berg's, gym leader. I'm I'm thinking of Aaron. The Gen you Four are. one, yeah. I am thinking of Aaron. Oh my that gosh! Guy. I mean, I couldn't even remember his name. He's so forgettable. But yeah, yeah, this that, is. I I remember the Gen Four Elite Four members more than I remember a lot of other things. What's weird to me is you're like, who can think of another Gym 4? I was like, I can think of Aaron. And then that was where you went. I was like, what? <laughs> I think he's a memorable character design. Yeah, you know. He is for different reasons. I like Bertha and Lucian. I think the Elite 4 member character designs in Gen 4 yeah. were very memorable because they didn't go... And this is like a very bad reason, but they didn't go like the re- the route of like, let's design them with like normal people color hair like they do with everything else. They're just like, let's make them wild and crazy. And so, like, the hairs match, the the color of the hair matches their type. Except for Bertha, she's just old. Yeah, she's just old, but you she's just like... your old lady. She's she's Agatha 2.0 with hip out on. Like, yeah, her and Agatha having tea together, I'd love to see it. Flint also, like, plays... I think, I think Flint is the first time you actually encounter an Elite Four member, really, outside of a game, excluding Lance. We don't count Lance. But, like, I think he's the first time you really encounter an Elite Four member outside of the Elite Four in the games. I I don't know. It's just very memorable in that sense. Like, it's more memorable than Ramos, like, who I still... I need to cosplay Ramos now at this point. Only because it's become such a meme. Because who's Ramos? Nobody knows. Nobody at all. But are, are, who are your favorites, guys? Who are your favorites? Uh, okay, so it has to be Jesse and James. 
They are very good. That's a good answer. They have to be the top. To be fair, they're just shadows of their former selves now, but that's okay. Be that as it may, like, it is great that they have, like, this entire history uh, much longer than almost any other character gets, you know? Because e- any character, even if they're, like, a big like yeah. character like Misty or Brock or somebody, aren't around the entire run of the show, you know? Yeah. The way that Jesse and James have been. So they've had, like, great backstories, very fleshed out, fully characterized. Like, yeah, they might be slanderized now, but, like, they are the moment, they are the icon, and they have so many good looks that they've had for disguises. <laughs> the The reason that one of the original show writers left the anime was because of the decision to get rid of Misty and but keep Team Rocket. <laughs> he was so insulted that they would get rid of Misty but get rid of te- but keep Team Rocket. <laughs> oh well, I love Misty too, but Jesse and James are better. Sorry. How much of a waifu guy do you have to be to walk out of an anime because they cut one character? <laughs> well, she was the yeah. original waifu, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. So the original plan for the anime the entire time was to only run it for a season because they kind of expected Pokemon to kind of like come and fizzle. Peter out. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> wild. And so they they did that. They're just like, oh, well, it's not going to get much better or anything. So we're just going to let it fizzle out. And then it didn't. But the original plan for the anime was it was going to end with the movie. And the movie was going to like show like Ash and Misty like growing up and like getting married Again. and yeah. spending their life together. So like that was the original plan for the anime. <laughs> and then money got involved and boy did yeah, that Yeah, but who happen? got that first kiss? Because it wasn't Man, Misty. The, okay. okay. To be fair, like the first five <laughs> seasons of that anime, the first five seasons of that anime are a trip because of the people writing it. Okay. Oh, I love OG anime. Like, of course. The guy who did the first three movies was legitimately, like, drugged out of his mind writing all of them. (laughs) Well, good. That's how you make good writing sometimes. It's one avenue you can take. (laughs) I mean, it's part of the reason he died, but... (laughs) So, so what they're gonna do is they're gonna go to like this, uh, this park. It's, it's got like all these Pokemon in it, okay? And then, uh, the guy's gonna pull a gun on a 10 year old. Yeah. Uh, you sure you wanna do that? Of course. <laughs> Put it to production. Also, that guy's legitimately just Clint Eastwood. <laughs> He's just Clint Eastwood. Uh, it, it's, it's fine. They didn't get sued, I think. It, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, uh, the anime is like full of trips, man. Especially the early anime. So, uh, Lydian, do you have do you have anybody that you like? Any any character from the Pokemon franchise ever? Who comes out immediately to you? I have a fondness for the weird growing pains of Or, because <laughs> uh, there were some some very bizarre things that those games did that. Like, they're not good decisions, but they're memorable. Like all of the trainers having completely incoherent names. Uh, that, that sticks yeah. out, but, um, one, of the, was one very of the best weird. things, <laughs> one of the best things they did was, uh, Mirror B, who is just, just so good. Such a goof. His over animated, uh, dance, his music being incredible. Uh, he had two little cohorts, Trudely and Folly, and they, they were basically just a stand up routine every time yes. they showed up. Cause it's that epitome of that meme, like, we can't go there. It says 18 plus. You idiot, we just need 16 more people. It is <laughs> it is absolutely that, 100% of the time with those two. And that trio makes those games. You just watch them yes. goof around, and they're like, aha! And then they have all of the most powerful shadow Pokemon that aren't legendaries, and it's just incredible. They made it such a way, in such a way too, because like they knew that Mirror B was like super popular from the first game from Coliseum. Because if you play XD, XD has very little to do with Coliseum, outside of being yeah. like, yeah, it happened once before, and that's it. Because literally nobody else in the organization that's supposedly the same organization again mm-hmm. is yep. is from the prior game. No love for Gonzap. Mirror B's there. And Mir B's just there because they knew he's a, su- a successful character and they had to do something with him. And they found the best way to do it by making him a recurring character for all the Shadow Pokemon you missed. And they all, when they were making the first game, they knew what they had with Mir B. All yes. of the other admins have one song. Like, it's the, the admin fight theme. And then Mir yes. B always had his own music. <laughs> the thing I would like to see 
in any Pokemon game, because we always get references to like other regions and it always feels very wholesome. Mm -hmm. I would love just like one reference. You don't even need to say the word or, but something like I heard there was a region where like there was a waterfall and like a purifying stone or something. I don't know. Just something like that. I also think right now is a really good time to like launch a remake of like XD and Gale of Dark or XD or Coliseum on the Switch because you can catch a lot of Pokemon on that, but you could also, uh, you could also tie it into the Shadow Pokemon and Go because yeah. the Pokemon company tries really hard to convert Pokemon Go players into Pokemon players. <laughs> Desperately so. Looking at you, let's go. <laughs> and oh, they tried something different. They, they can't they, all work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looking at you, let's go. They're trying real hard to do that. Mm. And I think Shadow Pokemon being in Go is a very good way to be like, hey, look where Shadow Pokemon came from. Play Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD. Mm-hmm. And you can transfer those Pokemon to home, blah, blah, blah. I, I think that would be a really good uh, way to go about it. But uh, they're not going to because I want it. <laughs> but I would just love like a little like hint, like an NPC that like brings it up in the next game, you know? They bring up every other region. Just bring up Or. Don't let it be the redheaded stepchild. <laughs> I want I want people to know that Or existed. If nothing else, can we get the the real game battle thing again? Because battle that was bingo good. was really fun. Yeah, the, uh, even the uh, I love the CDs from from uh, XD Gale of Darkness with the battle challenges in it. Those were always good. So I mm. I would love anything like that, honestly. I mean, that sounds almost like a Battle Frontier, so maybe the answer's no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the answer's no. We'll see. All right. So I guess that's my turn, and I have to pick an NPC. You guys pick some big ones, though. Like, you're just like, hey, let's, let's kick it off big. I don't know that I could kick it off big. I, I think that, like, some of my favorite NPCs are just, like, the professors. Like, Professor Rowan sticks out to me, but maybe it's just because I spent a lot of time in Gen 4. <laughs> That uh, checks out. Yeah, yeah I, that's what I, that's, that's what I imagine. But Professor, well, who's Rowan, your favorite? Pro- like, who's everyone's favorite professor then? Yeah, because Rowan is honestly the one I probably think about the least. I I think about Rowan because everyone else is like, ah, I'm an, a biologist who goes off and discovers things. Yeah, Professor Rowan strikes me as like a literature professor who, by the rules of Pokemon Society, has to give out starters. So and he's just so, like, I just want to get back to reading about Kant. Can I? Be done with this world-ending phenomenon. So as somebody who's gone through, like, the uh, the graduate school experience, Rowan <laughs> is 100% just an older PI for a lab, <laughs> where he's just like, yeah, I have all these crazy theories, but I have assistants that do all the research, and then I take the credit. <laughs> That's 100% the vibe I get from him. Everybody else, like, Kukui's like, I'm out in the field, I'm doing science. Juniper has that feeling, too. Um, I would say Sycamore does as well. Like, there are these people who are, like, there are these younger scientists that are, like, very excited about going out in the field and doing their research. And Rowan's just, like, over that. He's like, <laughs> we're going to write we're gonna write some papers based on the data that you collect. He probably has a bad knee, you know? Well, I imagine it's the first time you, the first time you meet him isn't because, like, he's just, like, out on Route 202 or 201, like, walking around. I bet he likes whiskey. He looks like he'd like whiskey, you know? It's more that he's, he's like, <laughs> back from a conference. Mm-hmm. That's how it feels. Like, he's back from a conference. He went to a conference to give a talk on Pokemon Evolution. And so, that's Professor Rowan. I think the, the Pokemon professor I like the most is is Kakui. Because he's just, he's very fun in the games. But I just admire his dedication to going, Professors wear lab coats. But not the conclusion of, so it protects their body, I should wear a shirt underneath it too. I think that's more uh, the Pokemon company just going, yeah, science people wear lab coats. <laughs> I mean, there's that, it. but it's... <laughs> I just truly... I, I love his design, and I love his general attitude towards Ash in the anime. He's like, huh, I guess I'm a dad now. And it's yeah. just great. It's very <laughs> precious. I guess I'm a dad now. Hey, you can have a dog. And he got to have a wedding. That's different. That's fun. He he got to be a character, and he was just kind of this well-meaning goof. They're like, let's have a part an event. It's like, good for you, do that. Yeah, I think he's probably the most fleshed out. Probably because of the way that anime ran out. You well, know, not like, even just the anime in the games. Like yeah. it's canon that his wife is Burnett and all this other stuff. So it, it all makes sense to me. I feel like that's equally fleshed out. In, in some other places, but yeah, I think he's definitely the most... Yeah, that makes sense. They also said that he went to, like, Kanto and he tried to become champion. I'm partial to Sycamore, uh, but I think, yeah, that Kukui is probably the most fleshed out. I would say Sycamore is the second place for being fleshed out, like, uh, in terms of personality. 
I I don't think you can get you can score lower than than uh, Magnolia, who shows up for Man. all of two scenes. She can't be bothered, you know. It's very upsetting. She's just a non-entity in that game. To be fair, like the her whole plot is that she's getting ready to retire, and she wants Sonya to take over. That's her whole plot. I think she retired several years ago, and is it's just like, like uh, it's like pulling me out of retirement. Yeah, can't yeah. be bothered. She needs her tea. Yeah, that's her whole deal. Is like Magnolia is just like yeah, I'm kind of done. I'm gonna retire. I'm gonna go to a beach, maybe in Alola. Uh, Sonya, you take care of this, and and that's that's it. You know, good for her. You know, she seems like a nice lady, and she deserves it. I guess. I don't know. Could you imagine if you were, like, pressed into it by a family member? Like, hey, you need to go into this career because I'm not going to do it anymore. And if we don't have a poke- local Pokemon professor to give out Pokemon, we're screwed. <laughs> I don't know. Our I, entire national sport dies. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Could you imagine? The guy with the Charizard give people future Charizards. To be fair, he does kind of do that, though, right? Because, like, at the end of Sword right. and Shield, exactly. he, hands, he essentially, like, leaves you a Charmander. And uh. that's it. Uh, which is also upsetting, but for different reasons. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys have a favorite gym leader that, like, you just instantly associate as, like, your favorite gym leader? No. Mm, that's hard. <laughs> for me, it's Elisa. For me, it's Elisa. No question. Oh, uh, that makes sense. I can see that for yeah, you. Yeah, love Elisa. Love the fact that she got a entirely different design between black and white and black to white, too. We love it. We love a statement on fashion evolving. We're here for it. We're here for it. That makes sense. I don't know. I th- maybe maybe like Gen Five as well. Maybe like Sharon. Only because it's kind of yeah, cool to see somebody. Thinking. It's just to like make somebody become a gym leader. Yeah, that's fair. It's to see that. I don't know. Gen Gen Five did a very good job about re- pulling back the curtain on like how things happen. Because well, I, was, I say pulling back the curtain, but to be fair, Pokemon hadn't thought about how these things worked. <laughs> There was no curtain so much as they built a backstage. Yeah, exactly. There there was a curtain. There just was nothing behind it until they put it there in Gen 5. And it, it, I, I think it's very cool because it's like always a question that everybody has. They're like, how do people become gym leaders? How do people become Elite Four members? Or like, what role do they play? And I fi- like I really like seeing Sharon uh, talk about it. Also talk about not being able to use like his real team like during gym battles mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which is even more interesting. I, don't know, I, I feel like the lore that some of these characters come up with is very good. Um, mm. And I, like I said, I think Gen 5 is very good at that. I would say Gen 7 for characters is very good about fleshing out characters, but I didn't want to read a novel. I just wanted to play Pokemon. And that's Gen 7 is just the Pokemon novel. I feel like it was just the first island, you know? Yeah. It, was yeah. A problem. it wasn't a problem after that. No, it was nice. It was nice flavor text afterwards. Yeah. The gym leaders I think of... I'm like, they're all either just such non-entities that I just don't have any feeling, or the information I get actively annoys me. Like, I'm like, Claire, what do I- oh, right, she's a sore loser. (laughs) I love that Claire is cantankerous. Yeah, but that's a very you reaction. (laughs) I'm just like, wow, you're you're a handful to deal with, aren't you? Yeah, Jono has some strong personalities, huh? Because you had Miltank. Miss yeah. Mill take 20. Yeah. <laughs> Whitney did the same thing. Like, Gen 2 is just like, exactly. how many tropes can we use the same uh, all the time? And that's like, essentially it's what they did. Unacceptable. Very that. Yeah. Out of the eight gym leaders in Johto, I mean, out of the four female gym leaders, one of them is so incensed she storms out. The other just breaks down crying. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. How is this what they decided to do? And then Jasmine shows no emotion as she is steely strong. And then Karen says, but yet you know, she's like, you better use your favorites. Ain't nobody got time for picking the strong stuff. Yeah, my big canon for that is she just doesn't want to lose. She's just telling <laughs> everyone to use worse things, which makes sense because she's a dark type specialist, so she'd be a shady. But you yeah, don't know, she's it. evil. <laughs> I'm very. It's I, really just a ploy. I love that. I'm very annoyed <laughs> by anybody like that. That's like the number one quote they put on like the Pokemon subreddit. Everything. I'm like, no one cares, and it's like, just like yeah, nobody cares. You. Just play the game. Do what you, do what makes you have fun. Get over it. Next. Yeah, like very. Well, bad. it's just because they. I, I feel like it's just a group of people who don't understand competitive, and then get upset that they yeah, don't like, understand that's fine. competitive. Like, no one's mad that like. Listen, anyone that plays competitive isn't like going out of their way when they do a playthrough of a game. You know, like exactly. They need to distinguish the difference. No, no. There's like 
well there are those people who just like uh, there's like this weird subset of people that exist sometimes and maybe they listen to the show and so i hope i don't insult them um there's a subset of people that i do like talk to occasionally where they're just like i need to soft reset my starter so it has the right nature and i'm just you know like what? i will do that for my nature just because it takes like five minutes and i don't want to be inconvenient and i'll only do it if it's an actively bad nature yeah because that's annoying yeah but like i'm just like i don't care like I will soft res- I will save right before I pick it just to make sure it's not garbage. Linian is exactly. I don't check my nature. Like I don't check my nature until I'm like ready to breed something. Yep. For battle. It's like now. such a minimal time investment that I don't treat it. You know what I mean? Like I just don't. Like I didn't care, and especially now with like mints, the amount that I care is very low. It, it's just like I- astronomically low. I'm not saying you're wrong or crazy to do so. I just can't imagine myself in the space where I'm doing that, you know? I mean, I would yeah. never do it for literally anything else, but, like, the starter is just very convenient to do it for. Hmm. Like, I yeah. wouldn't go around catching a bunch of, like, a Pokemon I wanted on my team for a good nature. It's just like, what I get, I get. But, like, for the starter, it's just so convenient that I don't even conflate it with that. I'll occasionally catch a bunch of po- uh, Pokemon that I want to use for an ability... But typically, it's when one is way more interesting than the other, not even necessarily strong. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't... Well, we love pickup. Oh, when you're playing through the game, pickup is like, love a good pickup, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Zigzagoon. Get that pickup. Yeah. Uh, there have been a couple Pokemon where I'm like, you know what? No, I don't... I, I'm not okay with this terrible ability. Let me just... uh, Let me look for a uh, technician here. That'll change how I play the <laughs> game enough. All right. I think this is a good place to stop. We talked about a bunch yeah, of NPCs. Lots of great characters. So many yeah. great characters. So we're going to call it here. And if you uh, have anything else you want to add to this, feel free. Send it to us over at PucklePodcast at gmail.com. But until then, we're going to kick it on over to the Pokemon of the episode. We will catch you guys on the flip-flop. <laughs> And welcome to the Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 475, Gallade, the Blade Pokemon. Because it can sense what its foe is thinking, its attacks burst out first, fast, and fierce. Oh, I love that. Thanks, Gallade. Thank you, Gallade. All right, Gallade is uh, surprisingly okay. Uh, I thought he was cooler when he first came out back in Gen 4, but he's got a base stat total of 518, which I think is unique to him so wouldn't that's... it be the same as Gardevoir really uh yeah and so base 125 attack which is crazy base 115 special defense which is also crazy and 80 speed makes it okay but it's just like Gardevoir in that regard uh 65 def- and defense and special attack and 68 HP so it's 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 okay it's not the best but it's okay it had a mega back when that was the thing yes it, did. it had a really good mega actually yeah i mean i mm-hmm. like that it had 110 speed that was nice that was yep. very nice 110 speed really high attack what i hated about mega gardevoir was that 100 speed when i was like just mm-hmm. a little more would be nice and Gallade got just a little more mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it's uh that it's it's okay uh psychic po- fighting is an okay type as well it's the only one in uh, sword and shield since metatite didn't get to make it into the game but he's doing all right but today we've got a BSS team for you. Uh, we're going to go ahead. I'll let Linian kick it off. Yeah, so Gallade is the first Pokemon. I'm s- really, sh- I'm sure I'm shocking people that Gallade is on the Gallade of the episode team. So Gallade has a weakness policy because this Pokemon is one you're probably going big with. Yes. Uh, because otherwise, <laughs> don't run weakness policy uh, on something that isn't bulky enough to use it. Uh, we've got... A adamant nature with 252 HP, 4 attack, and 252 defense, which is a little weird. And we're running justified instead of synchronized because, um, you know, it's better. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, We're running with drain punch, thunder punch, triple axle, and bulk up. So you want to get that bulk up to bulk your bulk up. And uh, you're going to be doing Drain Punch with uh, to heal, and because, you know, max Drain Punch is going to do an obscene amount and heal, uh, not heal you, uh, get your attack up. I can remember words. Triple Axle is very fun for, you know, solving problems. It's better Ice Punch in, in this case, because you can break Sashes. Mm-hmm. And then you're just, that's the whole thing with it. He gets big, bulks bulks up, 
gets big, and then punches things to death or kicks them three times in a row. It's got that bolt yeah. beam, but physical. Yeah, physical bolt beam with imperfect <laughs> accuracy. Physical bolt beam. Let's get physical. Physical. I yeah, have an electric good, ice thing in a in a, a electric ice galade in a uh, different rom hack. So that was fun. Uh, Celestela is the other option that we've got here, and I don't know if you knew this, but Celestela is good. Question mark. That's that's the right answer, though. I think that's the the question mark makes sense. <laughs> so so uh, what 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 we've got here is Celestela with a uh, 228 HP, which does a thing, 228 special defense, which is, if I had to guess, minimum investment to get download to grab the wrong stat, Mm -hmm. and 252 speed, and zero attack. Uh, It has a power herb with meteor beam, because this Pokemon is dumb and gets that. Uh, You've got air slash, you've got leech seed, and you've got substitute. So you put up your substitute... You can leech seed away to heal back, and then you explode things with Meteor Beam and Air Slash. It's a fun mon. <laughs> Alright, these next two are brought to you by the color purple. <laughs> uh, we got Spectriere, because, you know, um, because sometimes you just need an evil dark horse to wear sunglasses at night. So we're doing choice specs. I like to wear my sunglasses at night. Do, do. So I can, so I can. <laughs> It's just like an 80s theme song. I love it. Yeah, we had physical, we had physical, and we wore sunglasses, <laughs> and I look at that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're the best. Yes, we got the choice specs with the modest nature, so it hits real hard. Max special attack, uh, 228 in speed, and then 28 in defense. Yeah. I assume that it hits a specific speed um, benchmark. I mean, so it's already really fast, so it doesn't... There's... Yeah, it is. It go fast. <laughs> it's already really fast. All right, obviously, we have the Stab Shadow Ball. We also got Mudshot, Hyper Beam, and Sleep Talk. So, I mean, you know, it's Spectrier. It does mm-hmm. what Spectrier, you know. It does Spectrier things. Yeah. Then we got Tapu Fini, the other purple. Um, And it's got leftovers. Obviously, Misty Surge. Thick. They made it thick. It's a bold nature. Max HP. 228 defense. Four in special attack and special defense. And then 20 in speed. And this has Moonblast, Nature's Madness, uh, Taunt, and Haze. Um, and of course, it has like no investment in special attack, so Nature's Madness is great to take advantage of that. And between the Taunt and the Haze with the Misty Surge, you know, it's, it's providing a lot of utility. To mm-hmm. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, all right. So wrapping up the team, to fill it out, we've got Porygon 2. Um, not doing Porygon 2 things, surprisingly. Uh, it is... Uh, it is holding its EV light. It's got analytic instead of download. And it's 244 HP, 244 defense, 20 special defense. So uh, on top of that, it's got hyper beam, uh, probably to go big, <laughs> discharge for coverage, <laughs> foul play for more fun stuff, and also recover to give it some recovery. It's just a bulky boy that's not supposed to die. Very bulky. That's what he is. And then the final Pokemon is the Pokemon we've all been waiting for because what is a what is any Pokemon team without a Landorusarian holding Good, the Super useful, desirable. That's what any <laughs> team is without Landorusarian. Exactly. But there are no teams, so that can't be possible. <laughs> yes. So he's got uh, he's got 244 HP, uh, four attack, four defense, 236 special defense, and 20 speed. He's got a careful nature because he wants to be a bulky boy, but boy, will he do some damage to you because he's not only he's got uh, fl- earthquake, fly, rock slide and swords dance. I assume it's just to be a very bulky Dynamax target. This team is weird, but it sounds fun. So, yes, it is, it's a good Dynamax target, but there's another thing. Uh, fly this- is really useful for burning your opponent's oh, Dynamax yes. turns. That is also true. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, this is the team. Uh, it will be on our Discord server if you'd like to try it out yourself. You can go over to uh, uh, PuckleDiscord.com and grab this team for yourself. Other than that, uh, that's the team. We will be giving away on Patreon this week. We will be giving away Shiny Gallade over on Patreon if you're at the right tier. So and that's sure a good there. Shiny. I that's know. That's a really good Shiny. It's going to be there alongside the Shiny Tauros that I forgot to put up. So <laughs> definitely check that out. Until then, though, that's this. Uh, we're going to kick it on over to the, uh, the mailbag. It's mail time! God dang it! Sending your emails! 
And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the part of the show where we read your emails on the show. You can email us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com, and we will probably read your email on the show. We got a lot of emails since it's been a two-week hiatus. Uh, this segment is always brought to you by the fictional energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! Hooves. And, and if we liked your email, we'll give you the Green Tauros badge, uh, which gives you access to a secret channel on the Discord, as well as... Uh, makes your name green i guess like an ugly green too so i don't even know if this is desirable <laughs> but it is what it is so we've got a few emails we asked you guys what your favorite spin-off game was so we're going to go ahead and read off some of these emails and our first one this week is going to come to you from charizard stan he writes stan. into it they stan we all stan they stan hi thatch co-host one and co-host two too lazy to look the schedule up mm. <laughs> Mm. Well, hello to you, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Charizard Stan here, riding from the cab of my beer truck on a slow, dreary Monday morning. That's uh, that's slightly improved it. Just finished the co-host Q&A episode, and I wanted to write in some of my answers from cherry-picked questions. Oh, please don't answer about the grilled cheese. First off, here's the perfect grilled cheese. Son of no. Yep. Mm. Uh, take a flat, non-stick pan and heat it on medium. <laughs> Slather real butter, not margarine or oil spray, uh, or mayo on the outsides of sourdough bread. Uh, okay, why would I use mayo? When you said sourdough, why would uh, anyone use mayo? Submediate, first of submediate, all? submediate was very adamant about the mayo. Well, well submediate is wrong, wrong and a very, war criminal. Very uh, wrong, and they should feel bad about it. Lay one we need to reconvene Geneva. They forgot a war crime. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not okay. Lay down, <laughs> lay down one piece and with and top of sharp cheddar and provolone cheese. Uh, cover it with the metal bowl until the bread is golden. With another piece and top with the other piece and flip, repeat and enjoy. Second, I found Puckle. Uh, after coming back to the franchise after a decade with the launch of Swish, I wanted to absorb everything Pokemon I could, so I just searched Pokemon into Spotify and found a great podcast to listen to. Unfortunately, that one stopped making new episodes, and I settled on Puckle. But um, tis. Good approved, approved joke. That's an approved <laughs> joke. Um, just kidding. I was hooked with some great segment intros, depth of news, and differing opinions of the coast. Keep up the great work. You're we welcome. That. You're welcome. <laughs> Third, sorry, you couldn't be bothered to learn our names, but you're welcome. <laughs> Third, my favorite Pokemon is so obvious, so I'll share my second favorite. It's a tie between Rillaboom and Zacian, both for opposite competitive reasons. Um, Rillaboom, because I think it's the most balanced Pokemon Game Freak has ever coded, up there with Urshifu. It's strong but not OP, has multiple sets it can run, and a great move pool. It also has great design, and I'm a sucker for a good starter and a good shiny. It does have a good shiny, actually. Um, Zacian, because I love dogs and it's bust as heck in every competitive format. In theory, it gets stronger in Series 10. Plus, when I get something that doesn't get it double its HP is silly. Uh, and double BP pretty much even at, evens out the double HP, so Behemoth Blade is the same. Oh, and it's likely going first because it's speedy. Come on, what were they thinking with this one? I find it funny that its best counter is a dead beetle. <laughs> <laughs> Also, it's also a great design despite being a dog with a sword in its mouth. I think the memes make me like it better. Finally, if I could have one Pokemon in my house, it would be Houndour. I have a mini pincher named Pippin already, so if he could have fire abilities, that would make him even cooler. Although, I don't think it's possible for me to love him any more than I already do. See pictures on Discord in hashtag pet pics. <laughs> anyway, this is great. Probably longer than I expected it needs to be, and I need to get back to work. Catch you on the flippity flop, your friendly neighborhood Charizard Stan. Well, we appreciate that. Counter All argument. Right. It is very possible to love your dog less because it burned your house down. That's probably true. Um, <laughs> All fair. right. This next email is going to be from Big Cat Bruce. Hey, Puckle Crew. I really enjoyed episodes 500 and 501. Truly great job. It was great to hear from so many people on the Puckle team. As for Pokemon crossover games, I think that any Mario-themed games could be reskinned as a Pokemon game. Poke Kart, Pokemon Golf, Pokemon Strikers, Pokemon Party. 
I'm here for that last one, and that is Pokemon Party one. is what it needs to be. That needs to happen. That's, really, that's we because we're all in our feelings about nostalgia for Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium Two mini games. That's all it is. I, I you're 100 percent right. You're 100 percent right. <laughs> the problem is there's like money on the table. TPCI. There okay. is. Yeah, just saying. Um, however, Nintendo would never do these because they would cannibalize the Mario property. No, they wouldn't. I don't. Think Ma- a lot of these. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Also, I Mario Party cannibalized Party. itself. Mario Party cannibalized itself. Okay. <laughs> look, look. All I'm saying is that Mario has long since been practicing the franchise oldest profession, and you can't dilute it. It's completely dilute. It's water. <laughs> what is a Mario game? Anything you want it to be. <laughs> yeah. No, literally, Mar- so, like, we were talking about slapping Pokemon coats of paints on things. They literally just slap Par- Mario coats of paints on all of the Mario games that aren't, like, Mario Odyssey. Explain Mario paint to me and justify why it's a Mario game. Please. I'm fascinated. All right. Well, continue the right. email. So, for games that would not take away from existing Nintendo properties, I think a cool crossover would be Genshin Impact. I see it as a third-person action-adventure game. Where you play as Pokemon with abilities and moves to attack a wild Pokemon and defeat enemies. As you adventure, you unlock new Pokemon to join your party, which you can level up and improve their stats. When they are in battle, you only control one Pokemon at a time, but you can switch between them to give you an advantage. Type advantage would exist, so having a diverse team would be important. I could even see this as a free-to-play game with gotcha mechanics. No! No! no not please. another one! <laughs> not another one! <laughs> no, please. No, um, to entice people to spend money for better drops, i.e. five-star Charizard would be a legendary drop versus a three-star Raichu is an uncommon drop. Open it up as an MMO or some aspect of multiplayer so players can raid dungeons together or engage in PvP matches against others. I don't like gotchas. No. 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 Listen, Linian and I both play gotchas. No. (laughs) (laughs) I don't like gotchas. I'm not a fan. If nothing else... Think of Shamu. Oh my yeah, oh god. god. Just, no, we can't have Be that. kind exactly. to him. <laughs> Do not give him another Pokemon gotcha. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Um, exactly. Uh, I think the Pokemon property is so diverse and has so much opportunity. I'm very excited for Pokemon Unite, and I think this could be a great jumping off point for the franchise to touch on all aspects of the fan base that have grown up with the series. I hope you have a great rest of your day, Big Cat Bruce. Thank you, Big Cappers. I hope you have a great yeah. day. Thanks, bud. Yeah. We appreciate but that. But no, no more gotchas for Pokemon. No. One is enough. Absolutely not. All right, this next one, and probably the last one we're going to get to today, is going to be from Professor Manzana? Professor uh, Lenin, Manzana. Lenin, Lenin, you've got Hello. This. Apple in Spanish. Yes. I Hello. No I'm going to read the email now. Hello, Puckle Crew, and congrats on over 500 episodes. Truly an impressive feat of podcasting prowess. I have thought a lot about spin-off games I'd like to see over this year, but somehow this idea never occurred to me until I was listening to episode 500, a Pokemon contest spin-off game or love maybe it. a po- or maybe a Pokemon contest DLC for a main series game. No. Don't love it. No. Don't love it. <laughs> I always felt that the idea of contests was cooler than its execution and of course it's not for everyone. Uh, a spin-off game or DLC would be perfect because those who aren't interested could just, you know, not buy it. Which is decent for a spin-off argument, but terrible for DLC because there's a thing called attachment rate. Which is what people yeah. care about with DLC. You want to have your DLC overlap as tightly with your core audience as possible, if not expand it. Yep. So, spin-off, not DLC. Bad idea. Uh... If it was a full spin-off game, it could have Pokemon catching still, maybe Let's Go, since there's uh, less of a focus on battling, and you could go on a journey from town to town, entering contests instead of battling gyms. Could be set in a new region or an old one, and still feel new. This is basically the Pokemon TCG again, but that's fine. Those games were cool. They needed more. <laughs> Agreed. Well, we only got love one. The, yeah. We only got one. And which it's is, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I love that game. It's a, it's yeah. a really fun idea. They should have done more of them. Uh, I, looking forward... I hate going back to it, though, because, like, it's so slow. 
Oh, like you can't yeah. play it anymore, but it was such a good you idea. You can't. It's on Virtual can. Console on the 3DS. It's on no. Virtual Console on my 3DS. I play it. All I mean, the I can go I walk in front of a train. It doesn't mean it's a good idea. That's more what I'm getting. But at. you can. <laughs> If your friends started playing Pokemon TCG on emulators, would you? Yes. Um, on an emulator, you can speed it up, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's fair. So Probably the preferable way to play it. <laughs> Alternatively, instead of being able to catch Pokemon in a game, it could connect to home, so you could use Pokemon from other games and sidestep the need to have battling or catching mechanics at all. Looking forward to hearing what you th- all think of this idea, for better or worse, and hearing the ideas for the rest of the mailbag. Congratulations on again... On over 500 episodes, here's to 500 more, which is Ooh. a terrifying sentence. Guys, I don't like thinking about the future. I just want to accidentally <laughs> wake up and we're just like, I guess episode 1000s in two weeks. Like that's, <laughs> that's where we need to be. That's what happened with 500. Okay. I never was like, oh man, we're going to make 500 episodes. I was just like, oh, I guess episode 500s this year and we should do something. <laughs> Um, let's not, let's not be like, hey, Thatch, you want to do 500 more episodes? That's like 10 years, guys. <laughs> 10 years. We'll be criticizing <laughs> Pokemon's 35th. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh. oh, no. Uh. I can't wait to see what we'll be arguing about that's controversial in the community then. <laughs> this timer. They just took the timer out completely. <laughs> We're going to be like, remember when there was a timer that was a reasonable yeah. length? Watch them take away one of the typings. That would be... Oh, oh yeah. no. <laughs> Guys, uh, we're just done with Bug. Bug was played out. He's like, we stopped Bug. Bug is out. Yeah, I, oh, that'd be fascinating. Bug well, is a I fun say, type. Yeah. Okay, it's a very I'm fun sorry. shape, yes. It's a very fun shape. I think it is a shape in like the Pokedex. I think there's like a Bugish looking one. All right, so that's going to be it for the mailbag. If you guys want to email us next week, you can let us know what your favorite character from all of Pokemon is and why. Let us know at PucklePodcast.com. This week, though, Green Taurus Badge, who do you want to give it to? I love the idea of a Pokemon contest spinoff game. Yeah, I think so it, it sparked interesting conversation. I'm, who was I'm that? That Manzana. was Manzana? That was Professor, Professor Man- Manzana. Professor yes. Manzana, you get the badge. Uh, just make sure you redeem it on the Discord server. And so with that said, that is going to be it for this week. If you want to keep up with us, come to our Discord server, PuckleDiscord.com, where we get to hang out and just talk with you guys about Pokemon or anything else, honestly. You can come do that, do Summer League, do all the things. You can also follow us on social media over at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. You can also follow us over at uh, on YouTube at YouTube.com slash PucklePodcast or on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash ThePucklePodcast, where I stream on Tuesdays. And I know McGee and Claude do Thursdays, so definitely check that out. It's always a good time. We did Jackbox last time, and I want to do more Jackbox streams with the community. Or are they going to do that Everybody on Discord? Everybody loves Jackbox, yeah. Or are they going to do this on stream or on the uh, Discord here in the next few weeks? So definitely keep up with that. Um, you can, of course, uh, also support the show by going to Twitch, donating via subscription if you have a Twitch uh, Twitch Prime account. Or you can also go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. And you can check out the rewards over there. We appreciate all the support you guys give us. Don't ever feel it's necessary, but we do appreciate it. So on that note, uh, I guess I have been Trainer Thatch. I'm Sublime. And I'm Lydian. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Bye.